I'm Gwyn Collinson from NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center, and I'm here to tell you today about the electric wind of Venus. So Venus is cool. Venus is awesome. Venus is, the, in many ways, one of the most Earth-like planets that we know of. Um, one of the key ways that it's different is that it's very, very dry. With temperatures on the surface of 460 degrees centigrade and whatever that is in Fahrenheit, you would never expect there to be liquid oceans on the surface. That kind of temperature only boils off that water into steam, but the atmosphere of Venus is still incredibly dry. So where did the steam go? So to talk about how we remove something from a planet, we're going to have to talk about two forces of nature. Firstly, the force of gravity. Gravity is the thing which is holding you down to the planet. But if you think about it, it's also what is holding the atmosphere down onto the planet as well. If I want to remove some of the oxygen from the planet, we have to overcome that gravity. So to do that, I want to talk about the electric force. It's the thing which your device is using right now to pump electricity around its wires, right? It's pushing the electrons around the circuits. And what we think can happen is that the electric force can help push on the ions and the, you know, the, in the upper parts of the atmosphere, push them off and up into space. So just as every planet has a gravity field, we think that every planet has a weak electric field. So we went looking for Venus's electric field and boy oh boy did we find it. It turns out that Venus's electric field is at least five to ten times stronger than at Earth. It's a monster of a force. It can rip heavy things like oxygen straight out of the upper atmosphere and send them kicking and screaming off into space. So this really changes the way we have to think about planets because it turns out that planets can lose heavy things like oxygen to space entirely through electrical forces in their ionospheres. This is something that's really important if we want to go looking for exoplanets, for habitable planets around other stars. It is no good having conditions perfect for an ocean and an atmosphere that you might want to breathe if some invisible force is going to come along and rip it all off into space. So what do you think? Um, if you've got any questions or comments, we'd love to hear from you. Leave them in the comments thread below. Um, don't forget to hit like or subscribe if you'd like to hear more about what we've been up to. So I'm Glyn Collinson from NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center.